Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have white oak. This comes to us from longtime viewer and friend Dennis. The piece is about 11 and a quarter inches long. It's about six inches diameter on that end. This end is more of an oval. It's about uh, five and a half to six and a half, depending on where you measure it. I'm gonna make a vase. I love vases. I love vase shapes. I'm an awful spindle turner. I'm, j I'm just not good at it. And I've tried to turn a few vases. I don't know, I probably have eight or 10 of them, six or eight, something like that, in my library of videos, but none of them ever quite turn out just just the way I want. I'm not, I'm not good at design and I'm not good at spindle turning. But we're, I keep trying. One of these days I'm gonna get it right, I'll betcha. So I'm just gonna make what I co would call a classic vase shape. It's gonna be very wide, almost untouched at the top. Although, and that's another thing, this bark is nice and tight. Tight bark, beautiful bark. I think we're gonna lose all of it. I'd love to be able to save some and maybe we'll be able to, but I, it's not likely. Not likely at all in the shape that I want to do. So it's just going to be a big round bulbous shape at the top and, and just a nice smooth long taper to the bottom. If you can imagine that, uh, maybe we'll have a bead around the top opening. I don't know. Uh, you can see that there's a chainsaw whoopsie right here. So I had intended that to be the bottom and this to be the top. And that way as I'm turning, I'll turn all that away. But on the other hand, if I'm careful, this is this this is the rounder top. Just about doesn't need need to lose any wood. Uh, if I'm careful and, and keep it, keep my top part within here, then and then turn that away that would work out well it's safer to do it this way because I know by the time I get down here I'll be tapering it in and and, and I'll cut all that away uh, I, I haven't quite decided yet what I'm gonna do but what I am gonna do is find the center of that end find the center of that end put it between centers over here on the lathe and we're gonna get to turning a vase out of this white oak from Dennis. Thanks, Dennis. Now, one of the reasons I don't usually turn larger vases, and like I said, this is the largest vase I've ever attempted, is because I don't have a steady rest, and I just don't have time to build a steady rest, and because I don't do a lot of spindle turning, I've never really needed a steady rest. You know, one of these days I'll build one or buy one. The only decent one that you can buy costs about 400 bucks or something like that. So I'm going to use my large jaws. You can see the difference there. These will be uh, open to about three and a half inches. And the wood can go in there. The, the uh, tenon can go in there about an inch and a quarter before it bottoms out. So that'll give me a good grip. And I feel pretty confident about that. And like I said, this is piece is about 11 and a quarter inches long. It's probably going to end up about 10 nine and a half to ten inches in length. So here's what I've done. Maybe you can see I drove my live center in there just a little bit just to mark it and if I could find my live, my drive center, here it is. I'm just gonna poke that in here, open the jaws up, let it get in there a ways, and then tighten it up and that way I don't have to take my chuck off and put that in the Morse taper. It'll just, it'll just work in my chuck like that. It'll be fine. And then I'll just put this on here and bring up my tailstock. You can't even see, or can you? Maybe you can. And get my live center into that little pokey hole I made. There we go. And then apply a lot of pressure. Now there are some bug holes, I noticed. And just now when I turned this, I just saw a whole bunch of sawdust fall out of one of those bug holes. So I hope whoever was eaten in there has left the building. But we're going to do a lot of turning, so maybe we'll turn them away. And I'll just bring up my tool vest. We'll spin the piece up and see what kind of speed we can get out of it. Should be fairly well balanced. So about 588 is as fast as we can go without a whole lot of shaking going on. Uh, this is going to be the top. I forgot to point that out. You can see that chainsaw whoopsie here. But that, that's going to get cut away. I, I just like the idea of the rounder top. I'll have to cut away less wood than I will down here. And down here, this is going to be where the tenon goes anyway. So it doesn't matter that it's all out of shape, it's going to end up being three and a half inches round. Even though it's a spindle turning, I'm going to be using bowl gouges. My very favorite 5 8 inch bowl gouge. 588 RPM mask and face shield on.
easy to blow right past your target because uh, you think you well I'm only taking off a little tiny bit but you're taking off twice you're taking off a little tiny bit here and a little tiny bit over here as that piece comes around so I need to be careful I'm getting real close Yep, there we go. We're happy with that. I'm going to switch to a skew here to square up this corner in here. And we don't want this to bottom out inside the chuck before it gets to here. So it can't be more than about an inch and a quarter. I'd like an inch and an eighth and we have a perfect inch and an eighth now. So it's a good length, flat. We're ready to turn it around and put it in the chuck jaw as soon as I switch over to my larger chuck. And we'll bring the tailstock back up, apply a little pressure. And now we can turn the whole vase and then remove the tailstock so we can hollow it out. And I think that tenon's going to hold just fine. So now this is the top of the vase, but the chainsaw whoopsie is now at the top. It is still out of balance, but I got it clear up to 600 RPM. I'm going to be using the same 5 8 inch bowl gouge, freshly sharpened, mask and face shield on. We'll go with that for now. I'll start working on the side profile and see what happens. See what comes up. Well, there's a lot more uh, bug activity than I thought. Oh boy. Speaking of bug, you see that little guy? Okay, if for the faint of heart, look away. Disgusting. Icky. I, I have to uh, determine a bottom. You know, the bottom is not here. I can't work right up to the chuck, so I need to be at least a half an inch away from there. I'm just going to use my parting tool to mark a, a bottom somewhere here. And I don't want to make this so small that I weaken it for when we don't have tailstock support. I don't want it shaking loose in there. Oh boy. Well, what are we going to do? Another little bugger. I guess uh, once I get this turned to a pretty close to the shape it's going to be, I guess I'll put it in the microwave, try and kill all those little creatures. We should be getting more in balance here. I might be able to turn the speed up. Let's find out. Now that was about 740.
Yeah, I think this looks pretty good with this bark on here. Now you have to imagine it all smoothed out with my sandal flex and feeling good and looking good. The problem comes, and it's a problem of my own making, is this chainsaw cut that happens to be the furthest away from the tool rest. I, I've got to go a long ways in here to get rid of that. And if, by doing that, I'm going to get rid of all of this and all of this. And I don't want to do that. Now, I think with my, uh, after this is sanded with a two inch sanding disc and, and with my uh, sandal flex cleaning this all up, I think I can make that look pretty good. And then the finish on there. So I'm kind of leaning towards, I'm almost done here, except for all these bugs, bugs, worms slugs yeah i think this is futile trying to I, I i just can't get rid of that i can't even really make it much smaller than it is without losing a lot of this good looking bark this is about the right shape and this is about the right thickness down here yeah i kind of think i'm done i'm gonna mark where my chuck jaws are gripping this base so that i can get it back exactly where it is now and then i'm gonna take this off of here and take it in the house and microwave it for probably like three minutes on and 20 minutes off and three minutes on and 20 minutes off and do that for a while i don't, I don't want to get it so dry that it cracks or something so that's why you have to be careful you gotta let it cool down and then radiate those bugs and then let it cool down and radiate those bugs so I, i'm gonna do that for a while i guess i'll probably see you tomorrow it's four o'clock by the time i kill all the bugs it's gonna be six o'clock so I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow it's one of those spring days where if you're wearing two shirts you're too hot and if you take one off you're just freezing to death so I got a fan blowing on me and I'm keeping both shirts on. It's about 56 degrees today. Nice sunny day, but it's chilly. Uh, I might have mentioned yesterday that I was going to put this in the microwave for 5 minutes on and 20 minutes off. I hope I didn't say that. If I, if I said that, I was definitely wrong. 1 minute on, 20 minutes off. That's what I meant to say. And even at 1 minute on and 20 minutes off, I developed a crack here and it goes into the uh, tenon. So I put some CA in that crack and I put some CA in the, in the part inside the tenon there and then I clamped my jaws around it and that pulled it together pretty well and I think it's going to be just fine but I just wanted to, I didn't want anybody putting in wood in, in for five minutes no matter the size of the piece of wood five minutes is way too long for any piece of wood you just kind of have to sneak up on it 30 seconds sometimes you know if it's a small piece of wood 30 seconds on 10 minutes off something like that so i'm going to start with getting rid of this it's driving me crazy and then i, I need to establish where i'm going to cut this off so i'll be using my parting tool for both of those things get rid of this and, and make my stop cut down here i did i did do a lot of digging last night before i went in like i told you and the good part is all of these holes uh you can see they don't go deep at all they all stop the wood is right there so I, all I did was clean out some crud from the bugs and and it's solid wood right under that now up this way the story is a little bit different we didn't turn we didn't turn as deep so some of these holes are deeper I don't know if there's any bugs in there or not I like to think if there are they're dead now I'm pretty much done turning except for like I said down here and then I'm going to shear scrape the whole thing and try and clean up my cuts a little bit better. And then I'm going to sand before I drill it out because I want to have tailstock support for the longest period of time that I can. So I'll do all the sanding and finishing on the outside here before I take the tailstock away and we drill it out. So I'm going to get my mask and face shield on. We're going to be turning at about 900 RPM and I'm just going to work in this area for now. Okay, so this is the bottom of our vase now, and this gives me some working room so that when I go to part it off, I've, I can get over here at a bit of an angle to do that. So now a little shear scraping with my freshly sharpened 5 8 bowl gouge, and I've turned the speed up to 1200 RPM. Way 
better. I can't really do a lot up this way. I'm afraid of peeling that bark right off of there. So it's going to get sanded and it's going to look different than it does right now. I guess it's time for sanding. Okay, I'm going to start the sanding with my Sandoflex. This is 120 grit. I'm just going to sand the bark with that. And I'll do a little extra work on our chainsaw whoopsie here. And then I will do 180 grit after that. And then that's as fine as I'll go. And then I'm going to work up to 400 grit. And I'll show you what both of those things look like as soon as I get my mask on. So that's just a sample of what it's going to look like and already that feels much smoother. When I'm done with that I'll switch to my 2 inch sanding disc as I said starting with 80 grit. I'm going to have the lathe spinning in reverse at about 350. And that's going to be pretty easy peasy. I'll bring you back when it's time for some sanding sealer. See you in a bit. See how this is going to look with a little sanding sealer on here and then some shellac. This is shellac based sanding sealer. Now this, this part right here, that chainsaw whoopsie, I, I do believe we've turned it into a, a feature. I, I kind of I kind of like it. Well, I don't kind of like it. I like it a lot. It looks pretty good. It looks like somebody carved it in there on purpose which is the way a lot of these bug holes look. Now I'm going to have to use a brush on a lot of this, obviously on the bark, but also inside of all these bug holes. So I'll probably end up really just brushing the whole thing. So I've got some sanding sealer in this little can and I've got my little brush. And I'm just going to start brushing the bug holes. And there's a couple. And I want to get it up in there as far as I can get it. A lot of guys carve up their their turnings after they've done most of the work like like now but ours are already already carved up for us by those bugs next time you see me this will have at least two coats of sanding sealer on here and we will start working on the inside but i'll see you in a little bit well i thought i was going to drill about a three inch hole here but i, I want to leave about a quarter inch border around for my bead and that's about what i have here so this is a two and three quarter inch bit that i'm going to use the lathe is going to be spinning at only about 160 rpm because it's such a large bit and i probably won't show you all of this it gets pretty boring but i'll show you the start and the end maybe or something like that middle somewhere who knows i'm just going to go slow Well, you'd think a guy as old as me with a certain amount of experience would know better, but I guess I wasn't thinking, I don't know. Uh, that two and three quarter inch bit, it, it's making the cut, but boy, oh boy, it's slow and it's getting hot, really hot. I had to stop like three or four times already. So I've switched down to a two inch and I'm just going to use that to get going again here. I'll drill all the way through with a two inch and then uh, switch back to the two and three quarters. I am going to speed it up just a touch, about 220 RPM. chore that was I'm telling you I will tell you holy smokes oh my gosh I've been working on that for two and a half hours and that's just the small bit I still have to follow with the large bit I'm telling you I, I just didn't think this through I don't know what's wrong with me this is end grain and it's oak and it just takes a long time and it gets hot and when it gets hot you can't get near this thing you can see that it's changed color it's black now instead of silver I had to stop and sharpen it twice I just sharpened it while it was still in the chuck which made it easier what a chore and the reason it took so long is because 
maybe you can hear the fan blowing. I, I'd pull it out and let it just sit like this with the fan blowing on it. And it'd take a good 15, 20 minutes to cool down. I can't even touch it right now. It's, it's hot. So now it's time to switch to the larger bit. That's just plain noisy and annoying, so uh, I'll come back when I get it done. I'm going to sand the inside. I got a little bit, well, I guess I'll do a little bit of turning right here. I need to clean this up, make it more of a bead, do a little turning, and then we'll sand the inside and get some finish on it. Yeah, that's about all I wanted to do. Time for sanding. Okay, I'm going to start at 180 grit. What I have here is a dowel in my drill with a slit cut in the end and sandpaper jammed in there. And I'm just going to put it in here. I'm going to spin the lathe in reverse at about 350. I'm going to run my drill in reverse at the same time. Sand the inside, starting at, what did I say, 150, working up to 400. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. And that should do a real nice job, up through 400. I'll be back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer in there. See you in a bit. I always apply sanding sealer and shellac with a cloth rag and I never recommend paper towel. But in this case I'm going to use a paper towel. It just seems like the right thing to do. I, I, you can see how it's sort of rigid. It won't be, but for right now it's sort of rigid in my uh, dowel. And I think cloth would just fall over it, it would be hard to work with so I'm gonna saturate this with sanding sealer stick it inside there and spin it up and because I have so much down here it should get the bottom as well the very very bottom I, I can't think of any other way to do this I could do it manually I don't have to use the drill but I think the drill will spread it more evenly and I can still have the vase spinning which should also help spread it evenly so we'll try it I, I don't Never did it before in my life. I have no idea if it's going to work. So I always put my sanding sealer in a little bottle like this. And then I can shake it up and we'll just do this. And I'm going to have to hurry or it's going to sag here in a minute. Yeah, it got it. It got it all. And I can even buff it out. Some of you know that I use these to buff with. And that's long enough to get all the way to the bottom. I think that one is as well. Yep. That'll get all the way to the bottom too. I use this one between coats and this one uh, after the final coat. Please, does that work? Now I need to get it off of here before it hardens up and I can't get it off of here. Then I'll use a fresh one and we'll do a second coat. And uh, two coats of shellac, two coats of shellac on the outside, and I'll bring it back here in a bit, and we'll try and part this thing off of the lathe. See you in a bit. Let's see if we can get this thing parted off. On my uh, live center, it's a one-way live center, I, I usually have this cone installed on there. In this case, I'm going to use a much larger cone that comes with the live center, and I'm just going to use that to support this end while I part it off so that it doesn't fall on me, because this is pretty pretty heavy and fairly good sized. I'm not going to apply much pressure here. I don't want to split this or anything. So it's just it's just holding so that when I cut through down here the whole thing doesn't just drop. I'm going to use my parting tool to part this off. I'm going to get my mask and face shield on and we'll find out what kind of speed. Well let's see what kind of speed can we use here. We don't have to go really fast. We'll do about 750 rpm. Parting tool, mask and face shield on.
there's a knot in there. I was wondering what was giving me such a hard time. I don't know if you can see that knot. I don't think you can. It's right there. And I'm afraid that might break off. So I'm going to go ahead and call that good. And I'm just going to saw it off from there. Well, that went a little quicker than I thought it might. Okay, now I'll just take this over. I'll probably chisel that off a little bit, sand it up, get it signed and finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. We went from a log to a live edge vase. I like it. It was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. Hey, if you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. That would help me out quite a little bit. Thank you kindly. Well, here it is. One white oak vase in the books. Those bug holes bother you? They could bother some people, I guess. I, I just look at it as Mother Nature's art, you know. It's just part of the deal. You know what I like about white oak? Or any oak, any any open grain wood. Even with a, a, a nice sanding job and a nice finish on here, you can still feel the grain of the wood through the shellac. That's, uh, that's, that's just important to me. I've said it many times, no matter how nice a piece looks, if when you pick it up it doesn't feel as good as it looks, it just doesn't look so good anymore. What do you think about that chainsaw mark? That was something that was kind of nasty looking. I thought it was a mistake that I made to turn it with that upright instead of turning it away down here at the bottom. But uh, to me that turned out to be maybe the best feature of the piece. I like it quite a little bit. It looks like somebody carved it in there on purpose. The whole piece feels nice and smooth. The bark, all of it, nice and smooth. It is exactly what I had in mind, although I was able to save more bark than I ever thought I was going to be able to. There's the bottom all finished up. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm, I'm actually very happy with it. I'm not a spindle turner. But I like vases, and I think this one's a dandy. Thank you, Dennis, for bringing this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.